Welcome to the Faith Community of St. Dennis. Today we observe the third Sunday of Advent, also known as Gaudete Sunday. Our presider is Father Jim Burke, assisted by Deacon Gary. Also today we remember in a special way Adrian Katsalidis, Bill Driscoll, and Frank Falco, for whom this Mass is being offered. We begin our celebration by singing hymn number 489, Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Hall, number 489. Please stand and join me. Let us pray, O oh God. 
alive in the city have your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys so great in salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, world without end.
letter of James was written approximately 50 years after the death and the resurrection of Jesus. It was addressed to a group of Christians who were disappointed that Jesus had not yet returned in glory. Using an agricultural image, the author encourages them to keep their hope alive as they face the day-to-day -day trials of life.
celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Can you believe it? It's two weeks until the end of Jesus comes into the world. And when you came to Mass today, you did notice something different in the church. The third Sunday of Advent is also known as Gaudate Sunday. Gaudate is Latin for rejoice. And Holy Mother of the Church lets us rejoice in anticipation of the birth of our Savior. You'll see we're wearing a different color this week. Father Jim and I were wearing what the church calls rose and the ladies call rose, but we guys call it pink. <laughs> the altar cloth is pink, a rose, and we lit the pink candle of the Advent wreath. Next week, we go back to purple. So in today's Gospel, John the Baptist sends his followers to Jesus to ask him if he is the one who is to come. And it's interesting how he responds. He doesn't say yes, or he doesn't say no. He replies by telling them, tell John what you see and hear. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the dead are raised. He uses his actions to speak for him. And isn't that how we often see others? We can ask them a question about themselves, but we often don't reply, don't rely upon their answer. We usually rely upon their actions. As we all know, your actions speak louder than your words. And that's what Jesus did. And I don't think you realize how much your actions these past weeks have spoken louder than any words, doing exactly what Jesus has asked us to do. At Thanksgiving time, Saint, the St. Vincent de Paul Society was asking for Thanksgiving Day meal preparations. They received so many Thanksgiving meal preparation bags that they have many left to give out at Christmas. And the giving tree, it's utterly amazing the amount of gifts that you have given to those less fortunate. And the gifts keep coming and coming. You may not see them under the tree, but if you go downstairs, there's tables full of gifts. You're doing it while taking care of everything else we do this time of year. The hustle and bustle in our lives by putting up the decorations, preparing those special foods, and trying to find that special wit for that special person in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I'm finding it more difficult every year to find that special gift for those special people. But let me give you a little story. Tell me a little story about that will help you to determine the special gift. And you may have heard this from me a couple of years ago, but I think it's very appropriate today. There was a young family where the mother and father worked very hard just to keep food on the table for their family. This particular year, a few days before Christmas, the father punished his little five-year-old daughter after learning that she had used the family's only role of expensive gold wrapping paper that they were saving for those special gifts. As the money was tight, he became more upset when on Christmas Eve, he saw that the child had used all of the expensive gold paper to decorate one shoebox that she put under the tree. He also was concerned about where did she get the money? We don't have much money. Where did she get it to buy what was in that shoebox? Nevertheless, the next morning, the little girl, filled with excitement, brought the gift box to her father and said, This is for you, Daddy. As he opened the box slowly, of course, he tried to save the wrapping paper to use another time. The father was embarrassed by his earlier overreaction, now regretting how he punished her. But when he opened the shoebox, he found it was empty. And then his anger flared again. Don't you know, young lady, he said archly, 
When you give someone a present, there's supposed to be something inside that package. The little girl looked up at him with sad tears rolling from her eyes and whispered, But Daddy, it's not empty. I blew kisses into it until it was all full. The father was crushed. He fell on his knees and put his arms around this precious little girl. He begged her to forgive him for his unnecessary anger. The little girl grew up, went to college, got married, and now lives in another state. But the father kept this little gold box by his bed for all the years of his life. Every night, he would open the box, take out an imaginary kiss, and remember the love of his beautiful child who had put it there. In a very real sense, each of us has been given that golden box filled with unconditional love and kisses from our children, our family, our friends, and our God. There is no more precious possession anyone could hold. So when you're trying to figure out what to give that special person this Christmas season, maybe you already have. And let me tell you something that happened to me. A few years ago when I gave this story, Christmas morning when I went home, I found this bag on my front porch. And I was like, what's that? Who left me something Christmas morning? So I opened, right in the house, opened the bag, and there was a golden box in the bag. And it was filled to the brim with Hershey's Pistons. <laughs> so, I take one out every day, and I'll be honest with you, it's I make sure it never goes empty. I always keep filling it. <laughs> Have a wonderful Advent season.
Today, especially, we remember Florence Murray, Leola Zelensky, and Robert Morley. May they come to enjoy the vision of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for our own special intentions, which we now mention from the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord our Loving Father, you use John the Baptist to prepare for the public ministry of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that by emulating him, we may preach your truth to all nations. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Church, stand as a living witness 
to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And especially we remember the intentions of this man who knows about life this past week. We also place before the Lord our Lord and our return to him. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, Saint Nicholas, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
on Monday this Monday, the 12th, at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. in the church, Father Bill will have a talk on meeting Jesus. We meet Jesus every day. Come and learn more about that. Also, next Saturday at the 4.30 Mass, we'll have our annual Christmas pageant. Camels, carols, and friendly beasts will take place during the 4.30 Mass. All are invited to bring the baby Jesus from your manger for a special blessing, and a celebration of crafts will follow the Mass in the gathering space. Also, we'll have drop-in confessions on Monday, the 19th of December, from 11 in the morning to 1 p.m., and also 6 to 8 in the evening. Amen. 